The following program is produced by the Living Church of God. When a man and a woman marry, they generally make a commitment to be husband and wife until death. But in today's society, we see government leaders, religious leaders, and top businessmen admitting they've committed adultery. Will our marriages be destroyed because of adulteresses and adulterers? Who decides what's right and wrong? Is adultery okay? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world This week Richard Ames asks Is adultery okay? And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. Millions upon millions around the world commit adultery. Millions are committing fornication without any compunction. Even government leaders, religious leaders, top businessmen, sports figures, and entertainment icons admit to immoral lifestyles. Will God judge our nations for such immorality? On the one hand... There's a consensus that adultery is wrong. But on the other hand, many who believe that practice adultery anyway. And many practice situation ethics. They believe it's okay to commit adultery under certain circumstance. Is that what the Bible says? On today's program, we'll answer the question, is adultery okay? The Gallup poll gave this report. In general, the value system of most Americans is quite conservative on adultery with four out of five of those interviewed saying that extramarital sex is always wrong and only a handful saying it is not wrong at all. However, we want to say that it's okay for some people and not for others. The Gallup poll continues with this report. Still Americans resist workplace or military sanctions against employees who have such affairs unless the relationship involves a person of superior rank or position and a subordinate. 49% think there should be no rules against adultery in the armed forces. Incredible. Do we apply double standards? And who makes the rules? If you have a Bible handy, open up to Matthew 15 and verse 19. Jesus Christ knew human nature. Here he describes the natural, unconverted heart of human beings. Matthew 15 and verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Jesus made it very clear that adultery and fornication are wrong, evil, and sinful. And while 80% agree that extramarital sex is always wrong, half of the Americans interviewed said they were unfaithful. They committed adultery. Listen to this report from the London Daily Telegraph. The article is entitled, Britain's Failed Test of Faith in Sex Survey by Celia Hall, medical editor. British men and women are the most adulterous in Europe, but Americans top the list according to a survey published today. The study in 14 countries found that 42% of Britons, compared to 22% of Spaniards, 36% of French, and 38% of Italians, admitted to having more than one relationship at a time. But the global sex survey conducted for Durex said that half of the Americans questioned said they were unfaithful. What do we think in our Western world? Do we think we can get away with adultery and immorality? Here's what the Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 6 and verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. We will reap corruption and divine punishment if we insist on sowing, immorality, adultery, and unfaithfulness. As we pointed out in the previous program, the family is the foundation of any society. When the family institution fractures and deteriorates, the whole society and nation is at risk. 
Historians have analyzed the decline and fall of the ancient Roman Empire. They've noted the decline in character and morality that contributed to the empire's demise. In his book, Ancient Education and Today, E.B. Castle wrote, quote, Added to this initial cause of family disruption, that is, the increasing absence of traveling businessmen away from their families, was the consequent easy attitude to the marriage tie, the increasing frequency of divorce, and the growing freedom and laxity in women's morals, all of which ended in a loosening of the old family unity in which the best in Roman character had its roots. End of quote. How long will our Western civilization survive? Are we going the way of Rome? Yes, we are. And it's only a matter of time, as you've heard on previous programs. The historian Jerome Carcapino quotes the Roman author Seneca, who observed, quote, They divorce in order to remarry. They marry in order to divorce. That's from the Daily Life in Ancient Rome, page 100. As we saw in last week's program, the United States Census Bureau reported, quote, During 1997, 2.4 million marriages and 1.2 million divorces took place in the United States. That translates into 6,500 marriages and 3,200 divorces a day. The Australian Bureau reported, quote, Overall, 46% of marriages are likely to end in divorce, end of quote. The Western world is declining in its character, its social stability, and in its morality. God will ultimately judge our nations as he did the ancient nations of Judah and Israel. Turn in your Bible to the book of Jeremiah. God's prophet Jeremiah comments on the immorality of the leaders and the people. Jeremiah 23 and verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of a curse the land mourns. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their course of life is evil, and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Eternal. Therefore their way shall be to them like slippery ways. In the darkness they shall be driven on and fall in them. For I will bring disaster on them the year of their punishment, says the Eternal. I ask the question, who makes the rules? The answer is in the New Testament book of James. In James, the fourth chapter, verse 12, it tells us, There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. The creator of the universe makes the rules. He's the great lawgiver. And now some nations and states have the gall, the vanity, and the arrogance to redefine marriage in defiance of the higher court of heaven. Those responsible are leading their citizens into immorality, sin, and divine judgment. God has the power to punish rebels. He's done that throughout history, and he will call us to account nationally as well. The Creator says the nations are nothing in comparison to him. Read what the prophet Isaiah says. Isaiah 40 and verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as the small dust on the scales. Then he emphasizes in verse 17, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. Almighty God indicts the leaders of those nations. In Jeremiah here, Jeremiah states that the false prophets were responsible for condoning and leading people into sin. Jeremiah 23, verse 13, God states that the prophets, quote, caused my people Israel to err, that is, to go astray morally. Then God describes their immorality. Are we becoming like this in the United States, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and in northwestern Europe? Jeremiah 23, verse 14. Also, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers, so that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are like Sodom to me, and her inhabitants like Gomorrah. As Bible students know, God sent the kingdom of Israel into captivity by the Assyrians. And then later, God punished the kingdom of Judah. The Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem and took the Jews into captivity. Jeremiah describes in part God's judgment. Jeremiah 23 and verse 19. 
Behold, a whirlwind of the Eternal has gone forth in fury, a violent whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Eternal will not turn back until he has executed and performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. Both the kingdoms of Israel and Judah went into captivity because of their adultery, their profaneness, their wickedness, and their idolatry. My friends, unless we repent nationally and individually, our sinful nations will also go into captivity and total destruction. As we noted, some nations and states are freeing up marriage laws and encouraging immorality. But the nation of China will be establishing more stringent laws against adultery. In an article entitled, Adulterers Face Jail as Divorce Sores in China, the London Daily Telegraph reported, quote, Adultery is set to be declared a crime in China, with heavy fines or even jail for unfaithful spouses. The move, proposed as part of the first changes to the country's marriage laws for nearly 20 years, follows a big rise in divorces and a revival of the ancient Chinese tradition of men taking concubines. The divorce rate has tripled since 1979, but remains low by Western standards at 1.92 per 1,000 marriages last year. The current law permits a divorce where both husband and wife want it or when mutual affection has gone. One of the most popular television serials on the main government-run channel in recent years dealt with the theme of adultery without any comeback for the offenders. Even the Maoist guardians of public taste voiced no criticism. End of quote. The leadership of a nation can make a difference in leading its citizens into adultery or away from adultery. And let's understand God will judge nations, states, cities, and individuals for their lawlessness, their rebellion, their idolatry, and their immorality. Severe judgment and punishment will come upon all of us unless we repent and begin to obey the higher court of heaven and the way of life revealed in your Bible. In the first part of our program, we've discussed the national sin of adultery. But what does the Bible say about our personal attitudes and behavior regarding adultery? We'll discuss that in the second part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you a free audio tape of this program entitled, Is Adultery Okay? This audio cassette will help you in your Bible study. It's absolutely free of charge, and there's no obligation. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio tape entitled, Is Adultery Okay? You can also contact us on our website at www.tomorrowsworld.org. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. In the first part of our program, we discussed current attitudes toward adultery and its effect on the family. We saw that God will severely judge and punish a nation that embraces adultery and other forms of immorality. The consequences of sexual immorality can be disastrous to a nation. As one news group reported on the AIDS problem in the African nation of Zambia, quote, Zambia alone had 520,000 AIDS orphans and the figure is expected to double in the next 14 years. That's from the Reuters News Service, January 5th, 2001. Former Zambian President Kenneth Kaunda appealed to African leaders. He stated, quote, Many families in Africa are Christian. African leaders have to preach the Ten Commandments to them. They have to love their neighbors and avoid adultery. End of quote. His advice is godly. But will it be heeded by his nation or by our national and religious leaders in the Western world? You'd think that we wouldn't even have to ask the question, is adultery okay? But society has its own worldly values, its own evolutionary anti-God ideas that 
translate into carnal nature by default. When government leaders and religious leaders, top businessmen and the sports figures and the entertainment icons set the example of sexual licentiousness, immorality, and infidelity, what are we to expect? Television, movies, and the Internet project a powerful message of hedonism and pleasure-seeking. In a speech entitled, Hollywood versus America, Popular Culture and the War on Traditional Values, media critic Michael Medved stated this, quote, It's chic. It's glamorous. It's desirable. That's exactly the long-term impact of television portrayals of sexual behavior and violence. Those portrayals redefine normal behavior. They redefine what is chic, glamorous, and desirable. And even for those people who don't immediately run out and imitate that behavior, it changes our evaluation of not only what is accepted in our society, but what is expected, end of quote. The Apostle John described the state of the world this way, 1 John 5 and verse 19. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Or as the King James Version states it, the whole world lies in wickedness. Yes, Satan the devil has deceived the whole world, as we've frequently pointed out in Revelation 12 and verse 9. Are you being tempted? Are you being influenced by the deluge of sexual messages, examples, and images in the media? Are you being persuaded by your peers to compromise your values, your character, and your morality? Generations X, Y, and Z are being tempted and will continue to be tempted unless we change our ways and look to the source of true values in life. Where do you get your values and your standards? From television? From entertainment leaders? From anti-religious education? From society at large? What is the real source of lasting values and the true way of life? The answer, of course, is the Word of God, the Bible. As the Apostle Peter stated in 1 Peter 1, verse 24, All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So what is God's will? What are the eternal values of godly character? Jesus Christ taught us that God's will and His commandments are the way of life. Just read Matthew 19:17 that we've often quoted. When the young man asked Jesus which commandments he should keep, Jesus confirmed the seventh commandment as well as others. Jesus said in Matthew 19, verse 18, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Notice that two of these commandments directly relate to the preservation of the family. You honor your parents. You remain faithful to your spouse. Let's understand, adultery is always wrong. Infidelity to your spouse is sin. Fornication or premarital sex is always wrong. On the positive side, God is the creator of sex. He commanded procreation of the human race as a part of his plan for all humanity. Notice this positive statement about sex and marriage in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. God intended sexual relations and marriages to promote a loving bond between husband and wife. As Jesus stated in Matthew 19 and verse 5, A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together... Let not man separate. Husband and wife are joined together and become one flesh. Now, let's read the remainder of Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Are you committing fornication? Are you committing adultery? If so, it's time to face up to the reality of your sin. God says he will judge those individuals, as it tells us in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The penalty is eternal death, but you can repent. 
you can turn your life around and begin to live the true values that bring true happiness, true success, and lasting joy. Our society has so long degenerated that, frankly, millions are living in fornication and think nothing of it. The flawed thinking may be, since everybody's doing it, I guess I can too. Premarital sex partnership has multiplied almost ten times since 1960. Listen to this report from American Demographics. Quote, Today there are nearly 8.5 million Americans living with an opposite sex partner, up from 878,000 in 1960. While for many, cohabitation is a temporary step toward marriage, there is a growing sub-segment, currently estimated at between 1 million and 2 million people, who are living with significant others in very committed long-term relationships. These numbers are expected to explode in the coming decades for a variety of reasons, from the changing demographics of cohabitors to society's waning reverence for marital bliss and waxing valuation of individual independence. If you're an adulterer or a fornicator, what should you do? You need to start seeking God. He is love. And he's given us this instruction book of life. You need to begin reading this book. And you need to acknowledge your sins to God. Remember ancient King David? He committed adultery with Bathsheba. When the prophet Nathan confronted him in his sin, David admitted his sin. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. That's in 2 Samuel 12, verse 13. But he also prayed a heartfelt prayer in Psalm 51. Read that psalm. Express in your own words your sin before God. Psalm 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Yes, you can be forgiven. Do you realize that genuine Christians are those who were once sinners, many of whom were in the past fornicators and adulterers? As Dr. Meredith once stated it, we are the church of the forgiven. In the conclusion of our program, we'll discuss the spiritual blessings that God will give those who want to change their lives. But first, I'd like to offer you a free audio tape of this program entitled, Is Adultery Okay? This audio cassette will help you in your study of the Bible, and it will help you understand what millions do not understand about God's purpose for sex. You'll be able to review the quotes and references we've given you on your own time and convenience. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio tape, Is Adultery Okay? And you can also order this free cassette on our website at www.tomorrowsworld.org. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304. San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. One of the greatest truths of the Bible is the incredible gift of forgiveness we can have if we repent if we turn our lives around and accept the sacrifice of Christ in payment for our sins. God will even forgive you for the sin of fornication or adultery. In the 8th chapter of John, the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They wanted to trap Jesus by his answer. Would he accept their testimony and condemn her to death by stoning? Here is what he said to the accusers in John 8 and verse 7. He who is without sin among you let him throw a stone at her first. When they thought about it, they were convicted of their own sins. Verse 9, Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. 
And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Now, did Jesus say she was forgiven? Or did he give her some straightforward instruction about her future behavior? Verse 10. He said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Christianity is not a religion that condones the practicing of sexual immorality. But God gives us grace and forgiveness through Christ upon repentance. We must be committed to change our lives. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, and verse 9. The Apostle Paul wrote, Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You can repent. You can be forgiven. You can change your life if you want to. But you must seek God and His way of life. Confess your sins, your problems, and your weaknesses to God, just as King David did in Psalm 51. And look forward to a new life, a changed life through the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. In the meantime, if current trends continue, sexual immorality will continue with all its aberrations and perversions. As American demographics predicted, the number of cohabitors, unmarried, and transgressing the commandments of God, quote, are expected to explode in the coming decades for a variety of reasons, end of quote. May God grant them repentance for their sakes, and for the sake of the nation. Thank God for His way of life. He created sex to be a blessing in marriage. As we read in Hebrews 13, 4, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. On tomorrow's world, we'll continue to discuss the exciting and revealing truths of the Bible. Dr. Meredith and I will share with you Bible prophecy, Christian living topics, and the deeper meaning and purpose of life. So be sure to join us again next week, right here, at this same time. The informative audio cassette offered on this program is yours absolutely free if you call 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. Be sure to visit our webpage at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program was produced by the Living Church of God.